Welcome back to another episode of So You Wanna Lead a Path? I'm Reagan. I'm Nate. Uh, so last week, unfortunately, there were some technical issues. And because of those technical issues, we're going to kind of finish that up this week. Last week, we were doing Nelson and Winnie Mandela, and I cut off before I could finish my Winnie Mandela. So just a reminder, she was uh, a member of parliament from 94 to 2003, and then from 2009 until she passed away in 2018. Uh, she was a member of the ANC, member of the ANC and headed the Women's League and was imprisoned for 491 days. So we talked a little bit about how that imprisonment, you can't say how you would come out of something like that, out of a situation like that. So very quickly, let's take a look at my Winnie Mandela. It is, she is a variant human, cleric, seventh level, fighter, 13th level. Here's why. I could not, again, for her, think of any other race besides variant human that would fit. Mm. Why I made her a cleric seventh level is because while she was married to Nessa Mandela, that first part of their marriage, she was a social worker. So she is the healer in your group. Mm -hmm. After the imprisonment and after Nelson went to prison, she became a fighter. Uh, and so that's why I chose what I chose for her. Uh, as you can see, I really pushed uh, her constitution and her strength along with her wisdom. All right. Now, I know that intelligence and charisma are low. That does not, again, mean that the person has low intelligence or charisma. It's D and D. You got to kind of pick and choose what you're going to highlight and push through. Doing a um, standard uh, role with your um, ability scores, you can only choose so many to be up high. Um, and then also, as your character is moving up in levels, again, you can only enhance so many ability scores. Um, so you have to kind of pick and choose. With her, because she is a cleric, that does mean that she comes with her own set of spells. Uh, Toll of the Dead, we've talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, bless, we've gone through. Cure Wounds, Sanctuary. Uh, sanctuary is actually a fun one for me because it can kind of provide protection for a lot of your players. I know that when sometimes we've played uh, some of our, um, uh, why can't I think of the name? Some of our, um, not battles. Some of our combat? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there have been times where it's like, oh man, we might be in a little bit of trouble here. Uh, restoration, spiritual weapon, uh, beacon of hope for, for many people, Winnie Mandela for a long time was a beacon of hope. That started to change later in her life. And that's where you get into uh, some very complicated uh, issues. Dispel, magic, revivify, all these great things here uh, because of her cleric. Stone shape is another one that you and I have talked about several times. Uh, typically with clerics, you could make them full blown uh, armor and, and really just hit that armor class up high, but because she's a fighter, I had to keep it light. So it's a hand crossbow, a rapier, and studded leather because yes, she can heal, but we're not going to, in this case, uh, use her as that, um, that uh, first one into the fray kind of character. All right, now this week, we're doing one character. So Nate, you wanna tell us about our character even though I did just inadvertently introduce our other character? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. 
so, okay, everyone. So, uh, continuing with our, uh, I guess, our uh, themes of inspirational and important leaders, um, particularly in the civil rights and social justice spheres, um, I was intrigued to take a look at um, a very important figure in the labor rights movement in the 60s and 70s, uh, especially. Uh, he kind of hit his height there. Um, in uh, Cesar Chavez. Yes. Uh, so uh, could you bring up the PowerPoint, please? Ah, Reagan? my pleasure, my pleasure. So we have been doing um, we have been doing government leaders in some cases. Uh, we uh, I I thought it'd be interesting to look at a a labor leader, someone in the social or employment sphere. Uh, so Cesar Chavez, uh, born in uh, 1927 and died in 1993. He was a civil rights activist. Uh, for the improvement of working conditions and pay for farm workers in California and the greater uh, the greater West. Uh, he was in the Navy. Uh, he was a grassroots organ. He started out as a grassroots organizer for the Community Service Organization, a Latinx civil rights group. Uh, he worked to uh, he worked in civil rights and voter registration, uh, fighting racial and economic discrimination, and uh, rose to become the national director of the CSO, of that or civil rights organization. Um, he used his own money to uh, found the National Farm Workers Association in Delano, California, which I, I saw that fact as well, and I was like, wow, that is some impressive commitment. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, he uh, very uh, remarkable, uh, remarkable uh, and conscientious person. Uh, he was inspired by the nonviolent civil disobedience uh, pioneered by Gandhi in India, St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, he was a, uh, Caesar was a very, very devout Catholic throughout his life, uh, and that I, um, I, my father grew up Catholic, and he uh, he identifies as a social justice Catholic, quote unquote. Uh, so he considered going. He considered going to a Jesuit school as well even so uh that it is uh the the, the civil the, uh, the social justice aspect of catholicism social service yeah. uh, is very interesting to me uh in september of 1965 uh, the nfwa uh, launched a massive strike um uh california's grape growers alongside another workers group, the Agricultural Workers Organizing Committee, uh, largely Filipino American. Uh, it lasted five years. Yeah. Yeah. Five year strike of fruit yeah. workers. Uh, and expanded into a nationwide boycott of California grapes. So working people banded together uh, and staying together um, was it's very interesting to me, especially now in uh, in the wake of uh, folks who work at Amazon, for right. example, trying to uh, trying to advocate for themselves. Other big companies, too, um, private sector unions, uh, public uh, public sector unions. A lot of them are still around, uh, but private sector unions are kind of losing steam in this country, and it just seems like. It seems like it was an interesting thing to look back on at some of the leaders that saw the power in worker unity, uh, and Caesar was one of them. I thought he would be very interesting to explore. Yeah, because you were you were talking about he was a very devout Catholic. He even mm -hmm. used some of the. Um, masses and uh, some of the things that uh, take place in the Catholic Church as a part of his uh, protesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, um, Cesar Chavez is another example of a leader who was being followed 
or investigate it by the federal government. It's another example of where the FBI is watching these um, leaders who are trying to bring about change. And it brings up something that people do need to discuss uh, because if you are watching to make sure that it does not lead to something violent, that is one thing. If you are watching because you fear the change that can be brought about, that is something completely different. Yeah. And, and it also highlights, again, how <clears throat> our country, even today, where we look at our uh, leaders of color or our female leaders, they're typically investigated, but then you have these other individuals that are not investigated to the same degree. I'm not going to say that they're not investigated because we've had incidents where they have been and it led to something quite horrific. Um, but typically it is more of your POC community that uh, takes the brunt of it. So, yeah, <laughs> it, it's, it's one of those things that I think um, you can start to see the similarities that continue to come up, that continue to happen no matter what. Um, he's also a perfect example of the use of nonviolence and trying to bring about change. Uh, five years, that is, that is a lot of commitment, a lot of commitment to, to, to a, a great cause that brought about some, some good change. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, you wanna go first? Sure, okay. uh, so bloop. let's bring up not the Wikipedia page, <laughs> Wikipedia, um, uh, among uh, other things. Henry Cavill would just be so ashamed of you right now. Uh, All right, so you, you upset him. <laughs> I know it was a quick reference tool. It's fine. I, I had other homework to do. Um, okay, so Caesar Chavez. Um, I approached him, I approached this character uh, from a connection to the land and to nature. Okay. Uh, so I decided to make him a druid ranger multi-class. So uh, he is schooled in violence. He is a martial character. Uh, he's a ranger. He can track and he, he knows how to use different military implements. He's a, he's an archer. He's got a couple shorts, uh, got a couple short swords. He can get up close and stab if he needs to. He is primarily uh, connected to the land mm -hmm. and using the land that we are all a part of because we all walk upon it, right? Um, he is a, I made him a circle of the land druid. Uh, and I made him a, uh, uh, his terrain, um, the desert, because he grew up in Arizona. Oh, yeah. he, well, he grew up, he was born in Yuma, Arizona, right. uh, and his family moved around a bit. Um, uh, but I decided to make him a, a druid of the desert and ranger, their fav they have a, feature as well of favored terrain. His favored terrain is desert. Um, that essentially means that the party can move across that terrain more easily than they would without that ranger there. Uh, racially, I decided to make him a hobgoblin of the Feywild because I thought that was really, and I thought that was a really interesting, that's a UA class, so that is not an official race. Uh, UA is short for uh, Unearthed Arcana, uh, meaning this is not finalized Dungeons & Dragons content. This is something that um, the Wizards of the Coast company has created and wants 
players to experiment with uh, before it's finalized and published in a source book like the latest one that just came out last year, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Um, so the Hobgoblin of the Feywild has some interesting features um, from, uh, I can't find it right now. In the meantime, let's look up his uh, Ranger stuff. I started him in Ranger, so he's got saves and strength and dexterity. So strength, not great. Dexterity, actually pretty great. Yeah. Um, uh, he's a wisdom-based caster, so his wisdom's okay. Uh, his charisma is all right for organizing. Um, intelligence, again, not necessarily something you have to role play. Right. Um, it's just something that uh, that is less important to the mechanics of the cl of the character. Yeah, my understanding um, is that it it really doesn't make sense to have high intelligence and high wisdom because I think there's only maybe one class that uses both. Mm. The rest is kind of either or. Okay. So yeah, here we go. Uh, so here are the say. Uh, the how got a lot of the fey wild features. Okay. Uh, you and the target of your help action gain 1d6 plus 6 temporary hit points. Uh, so if you decide to help someone in combat as opposed to taking the attack action, uh, so that's peace, right? That's him taking a non-violent action. Yeah. Uh, and then should anyone get hit at that point, you've got a little bit of buffer there with 1d6 plus 6. Uh, Fey Gift's Passage. Uh, you and the target of your health action increase your walking speed by 10 feet until the start of your next turn, uh, meaning he could uh, go 40 feet in a turn if instead of 30. And movement in D&D &D is actually really important, uh, especially for characters like rogues and rangers, uh, gunslingers even, too, who, like, uh, who run on dexterity. Um, uh, Fight until the start of your next turn. The first time you or the target of your help action hits a creature with an attack, that creature has disadvantage on the next attack it makes within one minute. So not on its next turn, but within wow. one minute. And that's because uh, every round is six seconds. Uh, that's ten rounds of combat. <laughs> uh, the, ne the next disadvantage on the next attack it makes within one minute. Um, so uh, he can also cast ranger spells and druid spells. Uh, so hallucinatory, hallucinatory terrain, conjure elemental, hero's feast, regenerate, uh, silence. Silence is really useful for um, for against enemy spellcasters uh, because they ha you have to be able to speak certain spells in order to speak magic words for certain spells, if, that, if the spell has a vocal component. Oh, okay. Uh, cantrip, uh, create bonfire, guidance, poison spray, and shillelagh, which is a fun word to say, <laughs> but it also means that uh, you can deal extra damage with a weapon based off of your wisdom modifier with that cantrip, which is pretty good. Um, absorb elements to help you take in a little bit of a little bit of damage and redirect it, kind of like um, Bishop in X-Men. Oh, okay. That's a cool spell. Yeah. Uh, cure Wounds, Healing Word, Hunter's Mark, which is a good ranger spell. Good Berry, which means you can conjure basically a bag of berries that each uh, are one hit point. Yeah. <laughs> I, like that. I like that one a lot. Um, there's a lot of desert-themed ones. Uh, Pass Without Trace. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you're passing behind a sand dune blur, like you're like you're a mirage. Uh, heat metal. Uh, create food and water, which could be really good if you're in the desert, you know. Yeah. Uh, a lot of a lot of movement stuff. A lot of um, actually it's a fair amount of healing here. Uh, mass cure wounds. A lot of stone to block non lethally. Um, heal. Heroes feast, uh, investiture of wind, meaning it can temporarily fly, which is cool. Nice. Uh, and uh, plane shift, so we can get the party to a, a different dimension if we wanted to. Uh, 
passive whiz, pretty good. Passive perception, uh, uh, passive int, not great. Uh, <laughs> um, that's okay though, because uh, he's good at what he needs to be good at uh, in order to uh, basically um, support the party and maybe try some nonviolent solutions. Right. Um, being a druid, you can also change into animals too. Uh, not like a moon druid though. Um, more like a, hey, we need to look around from up high. I'm going to change into an eagle and fly up there and check stuff out, you know? Uh, so that is Cesar Chavez as I see him. All right. Very cool. And it's also, again, proof that for some reason you and I seem to be thinking very much alike because here comes my Cesar Chavez. <laughs> yes, now he is a Scourge ASMR Ranger level 20. Now, the Scourge ASMR, they are like all the other ASMRs where they have a um, desire to take out evil mm -hmm. uh, in the world. The Scourge one, they're need to tamp out to stamp out evil is so intense it can go bad and that kind of speaks a little bit to Cesar Chavez because um it reminds me of this quote and I can't tell you who actually said it but it's something to the effect sometimes you live long enough to become the bad guy and not making any um, claims or anything like that, but there are reports that there was a point where people started to doubt his commitment to the cause. And he became a little bit more isolated and a little bit less trustful of some people. And so that's why I chose uh, that variant of the ASMR. Ranger, it's because rangers are known for going out and protecting people from the bad in the world. Um, yes, he was born in Arizona. Yes, he did move to California. A lot of his work was in California, but he did take the cause nationwide where it's like, we've all got a band together. He joined other groups so that the message could be out there. Uh, so with his, with his abilities, I really pushed constitution and dexterity. Uh, after that came wisdom, intelligence, charisma, and then last strength. Because as the ranger, he doesn't require the strength, he requires the dexterity and the constitution. Mm -hmm. And with that, a whopping 224 points. Yeah. 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 Yes. With an armor class of 17. His dexterity modifier is pretty high. I'm proud of that little sucker right there. Uh, he's got a longbow rapier short stored, and he's using studded leather because he has to be able to be able to be maneuverable. And he does come with his own spells. So with this one, with his ranger, I made him a swarm ranger. Oh, and that's go yes. And cool. that's going back to nature because you cannot have uh, crops growing without bees and other types of beneficial uh, insects so that's why i chose him as a swarm keeper that so with that, huh? that makes a lot of sense yeah so with this uh he comes with just the regular cantrips light and mage hand those are automatically given to him you talked a little bit about absorb elements sort of like bishop from x-men fairy fire is where uh basically an object or a person is outlined in this uh, light. You choose the color of light and 
that if they fail their uh, saving throw on that, their dex throw on that one, then you can have advantage against them for future checks. And also my understanding is that they can't go invisible mm -hmm. while that fairy fire, because you could always see them. That's a neat spell. It is. It is. Uh, dark vision, he's going to definitely need that uh, mm -hmm. because he needs to be able to see uh, further. Pass without trace, you talked a little bit about that. The cool thing about pass without trace is that it's not just for you, it's also for your companions. Uh, you can make it so that your companions, they can get through anything and they don't leave a trace uh, behind them. <laughs> Right. So you could have in your group, like we do, a Goliath with full on chain mail, and you can throw that and they can pass a sleeping enemy without hearing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, silence is where you put up a 20 foot radius sphere and no sound is able to pass through it. So anybody inside is um, immune to thunder damage. So again, it's a way of protecting somebody in your group. Spike growth was a cool one for me. And I saw that you had that one also. Mm -hmm. Spike growth is basically where you put up these um, sort of like natural looking rose bush thorns, but they're huge and they're camouflaged so the person may not be able to see it but every five feet that they move they're damaged because it's camouflaged they don't know where it ends where it begins but it's about 20 feet which is about typical uh, because of the swarm keeper magic i have a web where I can throw up a web to restrain people, sort of like Spider-Man, but it's not coming from my two front uh, arms. Uh, I do have back arms, so that's why I had to say front arms. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> this one, if it is attached to two anchors, then it's up, but if it isn't, it kind of collapses on itself at the beginning of your next turn. So it does damage to that person. It can restrain them, but it kind of collapses in on itself. All right. Uh, Talked about fairy fire. Uh, gaseous form that you can put on someone else that's willing. You can turn them into a misty cloud and they can pass through a crack or like a little keyhole, but they can't do anything while they're in that gaseous form. They cannot fall. So, for example, if you had um, someone on your team and they look like they were about to fall, you could throw that gaseous form at them so that they can float down or float up and they don't fall. So you kind of, yeah, you're unless they're fall. unconscious, unless they're unconscious inside a monster. Yes, um, unless they're con unconscious inside of a monster, then yeah, they, they're going to hit the ground. <laughs> but I can throw out web and catch my unconscious friend before he hits the ground. Arcane Eye was a cool one too. I can create an invisible eye and anything that that eye sees, I get to see because it's communicated to me. Sort of like Big Trouble in Little China. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Call no, the president. Huh? Call the president. <laughs> I love that movie so much. Oh, my gosh. I think, I, I don't know if they could re ever remake that movie. I don't think they could ever remake that movie. Too good. Uh, Guardian of Nature was actually a pretty cool one. Guardian of Nature... You can call on a spirit to transform you either into a primal beast or a great tree. So if you're turned into a primal beast, you basically take on the features of an animal, but you're still humanoid form. And that increases your speed and it increases your ability to attack. A uh, great tree, it's almost like you become grouped. 
That's basically what you become. You, you become like your own like little version of a uh, Groot. And um, protection from energy, we pass by one of those. That is something that you're, again, able to put onto one of your teammates to protect them from acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage. You choose which one you want to protect them from during that time. And so that is my Cesar Chavez um, start downloading our PDFs for our character sheets. Mm. Don't, don't, don't worry. Don't panic. <laughs> uh, in case anybody wants, you know, one of the character sheets so that they could use to create their own people. And like always, whatever character you create, that's your character. And it's going to be an awesome, amazing character. And it's going to fit into your group. So pick and choose what works best for you and what you yeah. want to play with. All right. So I hope you had a lot of fun. This was one of our shorter episodes. <laughs> and we'll be back next week with lots of yeah. fun and more D&D. &D. All right. Talk to you later. Thank you for joining us on So You Want to Lead a Party. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click like, and ring the bell. And check out last week's video or any of the YouTube suggested videos.